Okay, we're gonna go over expected value. Your essential question is, how could knowing expected value make you richer? So to properly teach you expected value, we need to do a little bit of review. So this first page will be review of probability you should already know, but just in case you don't, I wanted to go over it. So the first thing we're gonna go over is um, what probability means with replacement. So whenever you um, replace whatever it is that you're grabbing, it's considered independent events because whenever you put it back, you'll have the same amount to choose from every other time that you are choosing them. Um, so this is an example. You have 16 marbles in a jar. Eight of them are red, five of them are blue, and three of them are green. And this is something you can easily replicate if you want to just kind of see how it works. You just need eight red things, five blue things, and three green things and then you can kind of see how it relates to each other. So the first thing that we want to figure out is what is the probability of choosing a blue and then choosing a red? So what's the probability of finding a blue and then a red? And I made this jar to kind of simulate what happened so that y'all can visually see. Um, please don't draw this on your own paper um, because I'm going to be erasing and putting things back easily because I'm doing it digitally on your paper. It would make it a whole lot harder to do that. So the first thing we are going to do is we're going to pull a blue marble out of there. So out of all the total blue, there are five. And out of a total of 16 marbles. So I'm going to take a blue out of here, record it. So the blue got taken out and it's out here. I'm going to record it and then I'm going to put it back in there. So now it's back in. Now what's the probability of choosing a red one? So I'm going to get a red marble. Take it out. I'm going to record that I took it out. Out of how many red ones? There are eight total red ones. I took one out. And that's out of 16 total. And then I put it back in. So to find the probability of what I just did, you just multiply the two probabilities together. So 5 over 16 times 8 over 16. Get a calculator and do your math in or inner because it is better to leave these in fractions when you're doing expected value. You could just put it in decimals as well. I didn't think about the actual process. So putting it in a decimal is fine. So just multiply the two fractions together. So open parenthesis is five divided by 16, close parenthesis times, open parenthesis eight divided by 16, close your parenthesis. And then my um, probability is 0.1563. So that's the first probability. The next one we're going to do is probably of choosing a green and then another green. So now the probability of getting green and then another green. So I'm going to take a green out of the jar, took it out. Now I'm going to record that I took it out. So how many total green were there? That was three out of a total of 16. And then I'm going to put that marble back in. Then I'm going to choose another green one. So that is three total greens out of 16. That would be the probability of me getting a green one. And I'm going to put it back. So to actually find that probability, you multiply those two fractions together. So after they're multiplied together, we find that it's 0 0.0352. Now let's look at examples of without replacement. So now we're going to um, not put the marble back when we take it out. So the first one is what's the probability of choosing a blue? Well, the total amount of blues are five is the probability of getting a blue out of a total amount of 16 in the jar. So I'm going to choose a blue and take it out of the jar of 16. And I'm going to keep it. Now, what is the probability of choosing a red? 
So how many reds are there? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight reds. Out of a total of how many marbles now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen 14, 15 marbles now because we took the blue one out. I'm going to put it back before we do our next problem. Um, so to find the probability of this, you multiply the two together. So 5 over 16 times 8 over 15. And when I multiply it, I get 0.1667. So if you look, you actually have a higher probability of choosing a blue than a red without replacement. Now let's look at the green than green situation. So now what's the probability of choosing our first green marble? Well, we only have three in the jar right now out of a total of 16 marbles in the jar. So then let's go ahead and take a green one out of there. Now, how many more green ones do we have in the jar? Well, we have one, two now. And then how many total marbles do we still have in this jar? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Multiply them together to find your probability. Whenever we put it in our calculator, our probability is 0 0.025. And if you look, it actually was a better probability with replacement. Um, so now I want to show you examples of probability trees. They might be able to help you if you get a little bit stuck later for those of you who are more visual learners. So I just wanted to show you an easy example first. So the first one would be tossing a coin twice. So before you toss a coin, the very first time that you're going to do it, you have two possibilities. It could land on heads or it could land on tails. And the probability of it landing on heads is one out of two, because there's one heads on two sides. And the possibility of it landing on tails is one out of two. Then whenever you go to toss it, so it's the first toss. If you want to do the second toss, if you got heads the first time, it still has two possibilities. It would have heads and then tails. And then there is one out of two head, well, one head out of two sides and one tails out of two sides. And then if you had landed on tails first, it still has two possibilities. It has heads, that's one out of two, and then tails, that's one out of two. So now finding the probability of it landing on heads and then tails is a little bit easier because you just follow this. You go from heads to tails. And they're both a half, so it would be a half times a half, which a half times a half is just a fourth or 0.25. Same thing if you wanted to do the probability of tails and then tails. So you start on tails and then you go to tails, and tails then tails is a half, then a half, which is just a fourth. So it's just a way to kind of keep track of your options whenever you're trying to do probability. Sometimes whenever we do ex expected value, the probabilities can kind of get a little bit crazy and sometimes it's easier to look at the situation using a probability tree. So now we're gonna get to expected value. So expected value um, is basically if you play the game over and over and over and over again, infinitely amount of times, the amount of money that you would end up having by the end of those infinite plays. Um, and then the way that you figure that out is you take the money that you receive for each situation, you know, um, you can win or lose the game or you could win several ways and lose. So um, you take the money that you would actually receive from each of those situations times the probability of that situation happening, and then you add all those situations together, and that gives you the expected value. And there is an easy kind of, um, it's not really a formula, but an easy setup in order to figure this out. So let's start with an example situation. So here's a situation. There are 500 raffle tickets. Each ticket costs $7. Um, one of those tickets will win a grand prize of $900, and two of those tickets will win a consolation prize of $450. So whenever you go to set those up, it's easiest to just set up a table. 
And so at the very top of this table, um, would, you would split it up between each of the individual situations. So let's look at those situations. You can get $900 as a grand prize. You can get $450 as a consolation prize or you can just lose. Um, so the next thing you want to look at is how much money you will actually receive at the end of this game. And to do that, you take the amount of money that you won and you subtract it from the amount of money um, you paid to play. So for the grand prize, you would win $900 and you paid $7 to play. So that means by the end of it, you actually have earned $893. For the consolation prize, you win $450 and you still paid $7 to play. So that means by the end, you earned $443. And when you lose, you won no money and you paid $7 to play. So that means that by the end, you earned negative seven dollars. The next thing you want to look at is the probability, which is just part over whole, just like everything has always been part over whole. So to win the grand prize, how many tickets win? Well, only one of them win. Out of a total of how many total tickets? 500. How many win the consolation prize? Two of them. Out of how many total tickets? 500. And then this one, it would be um, only three of them won, so all the rest of them would lose. So 500 minus three is really 497 out of a total of 500 tickets. And so this is kind of your, um, your table. And then the next part that you want to do is you want to calculate your expected value and you multiply all this and you're going to add it together. So it's 893 times one over 500 plus 443 times two over 500 plus negative seven times 497 over 500. So we're going to put each of these pieces in the calculator and add them all together. So we have 893 times 1 divided by 500, which gives us 1.786. Then we have 443 times 2 divided by 500, which gives us 1.772. Then we have negative 7 times 497 divided by 500 gives us negative 6.958. So to figure out the expected value of all of our winnings when we played an infinite amount of times when we're playing, you just add all this together. So we would do 1.786 plus 1.772 minus 6.958, which gives us negative 3.4, which means we lose $3.40 if we were to play it an infinite amount of times. But how much would the game earn if you were running this game? Well, if someone played an infinite amount of times and lost $3.40, who gets the three dollars and forty cents? The person running the game. So the expected value of your earnings if you're running the game is you could expect to earn three dollars and forty cents if you had an infinite amount of people playing your game. Um, now let's do another example, which you will get on part two of this video.